I have to sneeze. <coughs> Ugh, terrible timing. Uh, let me go post this link on our website, jollyrogerukulele.com. The perfect website to go to if you need to sneeze. And there you will find our schedule, and you will find the sheet music, and you will find a community of passionate and committed baritone ukulele players, regular ukulele players, uh, harmonica players, guitar players, and you should come join us. It's fun. It happens every day. It's almost free. And... It's a delight. Glad you're here for the recording. If you are watching the recording, we'll probably fast forward four or five minutes. You'd be fine. It takes a while to get everybody loaded in here. I'm checking the link to make sure it goes to the right spot, which it does. And now we just wait for everybody to show up. And the first few people in usually say, saying you sound good, Gary. And I say, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, uh, and poor Vic, she has been logging the hours with me so at some point probably at night she's like i gotta i gotta have, i gotta go talk to somebody who doesn't sound like kermit the frog <laughs> let's see hey terry welcome in sound is good uh bangelina just got the link i'm here she's here we're all set um it's, uh, yeah. ooh, ooh. look at that here we go sounds like i'm Sounds like there's something up here. Let's find out if I, my ear is right. I was playing it earlier with a student today. And the whole time I kept thinking, something's fishy. Let's find out what's fishy going on. Smidge high. I can live with it. Smidge high. Smidge low. These old peg tuners are a mixed blessing. All right, everything's a hint on the high side. Now, at least everything's equally out of tune. <laughs> uh, a baritone ukulele, right? Your tuning is never going to be right. That's one of the things I found out about this instrument. Uh, it's always close. You get it close, go on. Don't spend a lot of time worrying about it. Got into the member of Portal, too. Jack is killing it, right? Jack is, was fighting fighting our membership portal, but we're in, we're in now. We're in good shape. Uh, the membership on the website is not uh, necessary, but it is extremely valuable. <laughs> um, the The reason I want you to be members is that for baritones, where else are you going to play? Seriously, think about it. Where else are you going to spend time? Uh, it's not an instrument that is widely accepted as an awesome thing, even though we know it's awesome. Uh, it's just an instrument that we, we it tends to be a little bit in the dark, and so I'm shining a bright light on you guys i'm building up as much baritone uh, support system as i can there are a handful of sites out on the internet that have offer uh baritone sheet music most of them are pretty pretty lackluster uh so the, the, so that's why i want you here um and i take it seriously i want you guys to be able to go uh, and play in an orchestra i want you to be able to play with other ukulele players i want you to feel comfy if you decide hey i'm gonna i got friend who plays guitar but i'm not gonna work that hard i'm gonna play mine i'm gonna play it better than him and uh i don't have to work as hard and so um so we're going to continue to build our baritone chops and turn this into a, a legitimate thing uh, i'm going to get you as 
and just keep the sheet music rolling in. Obviously, most of it starts as ukulele music and turns into baritone music. Occasionally, something starts as a guitar song and turns into a baritone music. We have no, uh, no our, there is no repertoire that is ours. Um, I am in the process now of creating uh, that repertoire. I'm doing between uh, setting up arpeggios and working on my, my Shakespeare sonnet project, uh, which is also going to include Petrarch sonnets. Turns out Petrarch has a, was a much more complex thinker, I think, overall, than Shakespeare. Um, and I shouldn't say that because Shakespeare's my guy, but uh, um, creating those pieces of music for you guys as well. Um, I do think that this instrument has a lot going for it, and uh, we're just going to keep it going. So you guys should let people know, hey, this is this is a cool thing. Let, let people know. Uh, let's see, who else has wandered in here? Uh, Diane, I have to miss concerts tomorrow, but oh, you're gonna miss the concert. Uh, Diane, we're gonna sound terrible without you. Miguel, <laughs> Miguelina is here. Miguelina is putting in logging in lots of hours on her baritone. Cindy is uh, not. Cindy's a very passionate and devoted baritone player, and it's exciting to have somebody around who's doing that. Um, I think uh, I worked with one of my private baritone students earlier today who's. Uh, the reason that I have any Beatles music at all is because of him, and uh, he's very excited about. We're working on, we're going to be working on the next three baritone tunes that I work on. Will be Penny Lane, Yesterday, and Blackbird. Those are the three next baritone things that I'm going to be putting my energy into, and so. Uh, I would say all three of those will be really fun and really beautiful on this and probably a little bit challenging. I like to take the Beatles and kind of crank them up a little bit. Change. I like to take the Beatles and not do it exactly the way the Beatles did it. Just to watch the, you know, watch boomers kind of twitch a little bit um, and then hopefully have it be even better uh, for what we do as solo players than what, um, than what other people might expect you could do. Uh, when you played the Beatles, the biggest problem is is everybody has it in that they would listen to those albums four thousand times, and so it has to be exactly that way, exactly that speed. They're very uncomfortable with us taking liberties with the Beatles, and then here I show up. And I'm like, ah, get it close, move on. <laughs> so we'll be doing we'll be doing that. Uh, those are those are on the way. All right, we got uh, Oregonians doing baritone. I don't know what it is about sitting in the rain up there that makes people want to play a baritone ukulele, but here we are. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, we were gonna. Uh, I, I do. I, I like to make fun of the Beatles. That's what. Uh, it's not that I don't. I, I absolutely enjoy wor working on their music. I don't like everything they did, but I like a lot of the stuff they did. Um, and so we will be put continuing to push that through. Um, and you guys that are serious baby boomers, you should know it does not go the way you think it's going to go. And so you have to give your you have to sort of let that one spot in your head that says the Beatles are ex always exactly this way. Uh, you got to kind of scrub that a little bit because uh, I will get it close. I won't get it exact. And I don't mean to, and I don't even want to get it exact. Uh, when you take a band, and you crunch it down onto a ukulele, you have to make certain adjustments <laughs> usually the first thing is the key i did i did um all my loving and it's it's right it's exactly what it's supposed to be but i caught three different emails from people saying this is not right and it's because it's in a different key and they just can't hear the difference um yeah and you guys are gonna be our tent you're right you're the guinea pigs with for all this stuff we're gonna be putting it out we're trying i'm putting out as high a level stuff for you guys as i put out for ukulele and me and one guy in Ireland, that's it. Those are, that's who takes this stuff to that level. And um, I believe in what we're doing. I believe that what we're doing is groundbreaking stuff. And it is not what other people are doing, right? Most people take this instrument and try to simplify. Not this instrument. This Nobody's playing this instrument. But uh, ukulele, people try to simplify, simplify. We are trying to get everything down to C, F, and G. And um, I, I think we should do the opposite of that. I think we should find, I think we should keep it in rational keys. Um, I think we should find ways to make all of this stuff sound beautiful and interesting and complex and give you a reason every single day to wake up and grab a new piece of music and, and figure it out. You know, it's like the crossword puzzles of 
music. <laughs> um, and so that's what I'm working on. And you guys are the guinea pigs, right? You'll let me know if I do something. You're like, no, this is not what we're going to. This is stupid. Um, you'll tell me because I have faith in you guys in your honesty. <laughs> uh, let's see. Arlo says, how about the Eagles? Here's what you guys should know. I, I love Arlo. Arlo is one of my favorite people. Arlo is an amazing guitarist. Um, partly because of him and, in, and partly in spite of him, I think, um, we did Hotel California on guitar. And here's the problem. Hotel California, uh, in order to play it well, you need four guitars. You need those four guitars to be really highly competent players and you need to put a capo on the seventh fret. <laughs> and um, I couldn't do any of those things. I was going to make a single finger style arrangement for it. It just about broke me. It just about broke my, it just about broke me. And then when we were all done, it was still hard to play. And it was still, it sounded exactly like what it was supposed to, but boy, oh boy, it took all of my energy. I think that I blame that song for ruining this pinky. Um, and so, uh, so when when Arlo says, "Yeah, what about the Eagles?" I was they're like, ah, "Come here, Arlo, I'll punch you in the face." <laughs> um, yeah, we'll do some we'll do some Eagles too. I'm gonna do some bear. We'll do all the stuff, right? Vin Pan Alley, uh, Beatles, Disney, uh, all the stuff. We're gonna do all the stuff. We're gonna make it. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna have a wonderful time. We're gonna we're gonna spend our lives together. Okay. Um, and we're and you guys have to spread the baritone love. You gotta talk about. It. You gotta let people know that this is a thing. Don't you know when you, people talk about ukulele, we're super supportive of that. When they talk about guitar, we're super supportive of that sort of. And then when they talk about bagpipes, you're like, no, 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 no. Stop right there. Baritone ukulele. One of the things that's nice about this is your hand fits on here. There's plenty of room between the strings. You can absolutely play legit finger style stuff without struggling. The strings are farther apart on your baritone than they are on guitar, so you have more room to get stuff done here. And it's a rational size, right? You're going to lose the depth of sound of the bass end of the guitar. Absolutely, we know that goes away. But this is so much easier to play and so you can just enjoy making music, which is something we're supposed to be doing, right? So don't not tell people what you're doing. Let them know. Tell, let them in. Say, hey, hey, you like ukulele? I got another cool thing you could do. Uh, I love some, some Peter, Paul, and Mary. Okay. <laughs> Here's what I know. Pretty much every band from the 60s, that's what, that, we'll get to them, right? Uh, someday. I don't know. Um, I spent a whole week one time working on... Uh, Puffed Magic Dragon. <laughs> That's another thing that just about made me decide to, to quit music. Uh, get a job at the post office. All right, let's play. Okay, today's today's song's easy come after yesterday's song because yesterday's song, Simple Gifts, built on exactly the same thought process as uh, this, this tune. And the difference is uh, this is written by um, Paganini. And Paganini is a legit classical composer. The other thing about Paganini, a lot of people may or may not know this. I don't know if you know this. One, you may not know who Paganini is in the first place, but uh, I went to a little town called Luca, and that is either his hometown or where he died or where he worked. I don't know, something to do with Paganini. They had a little st statue of him in this one square. So we went to Paganini Square. Um, and um, turns out he's a hell of a guitar player. And so he wrote a ton of stuff for guitar that's well thought of even today. And... Um, so you're dealing with a guy who understood your instrument and uh, he wrote Carnival of Venice. Mm -hmm. And which, if you think about it, if you haven't been to Venice, you should go. You only have to go for one day because the first hour you're there is the most amazing place in the world. And then you tour the Doge. And then after that, it's exactly the same everywhere. There's five tourist shops and they just repeat themselves every block. But it's absolutely beautiful. Everywhere you look, you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. There's the guy in the gondola with the boat. And it's too expensive to go on a real gondola ride. So you just ride the thing that crosses the channel. It's a buck. And you ride across. It's a euro, I think. That's two bucks. Uh, you ride across and then you ride back. That's it. <laughs> and then you bring on a gondola. Um, and... Um, they actually are guys that are on the back of the boat singing the whole thing. It's just like you're in Disneyland. If you had to make a cartoon version of The Perfect Place, you would make Venice. 
and then uh, you're there for the day, and then you leave, and then you have a lovely memory. Uh, and I, and now imagine how perfect that is, and then add a carnival on top of that. That's the song you're playing, okay? <laughs> so Carnival of Venice is awesome. Let's go through the, the chord structure on this, and I believe that you will find it acceptable. Your C chord is here. And your G7 is here. That's it. That's the only two chords that we have in the entire piece. And of those, um, the, the big takeaway from that is any chord that sits on your thumb, its best friend is sitting over on your pinky. So in this case, I'm going to put a C on my thumb. D, E, F, G. Those are the two friends. C and G. In this case, it's a G7. Any chord that sits on your pinky is also going is can be work work just fine as a seventh chord. So you're, here you are with C, D, E, F, G seven. If I put an A chord here, A, B, C, D, E seven, those fit together just now. Here's A, here's E seven. Okay. If I put a D chord on here, D, E, F, G, A seven, right? So then you got D, A seven. So these, the, that's a little very brief music theory. One and five always work together. The other one that's friends with it is four. Okay, so one, four, and five. All folk, folk guitarists that are really good. Like if you see guys that are you playing music and not using sheet music, they are experts at one, four, five. They absolutely know it inside and out. So just know that those, those sometimes you see that and you're like, oh my gosh, that guy's unbelievable. Well, you know, he's, he's got a system. <laughs> he has a system. He is unbelievable, but he also has a system. So those are your two chords. There's no words, so we can't really sing it. So let's play the melody. Nice and steady. Um, you've got some threes, you got some fives, and you got some ones. And that's it, really. That's the only thing you're gonna play. Um, there is one place. Let me make sure I find it for you. Measure da, 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 measure 25. There's an eight. Okay, so when we get to that. But I'd say when you get to that eight, I'm like, oh, crud, major 25 is an eight. You're probably not going to want to just wildly go trying to stab at an eight because you'll miss. Put your, when you get there, the note before it's a three, put your index finger down. Now it's a little easier to get to eight. It's still a bit of a stretch. You guys have a bigger fretboard, right, on these, these baritones. Uh, but you can probably reach it from three to eight, and then you come right back to three. Three, eight, three. That's going to happen. Um, and then the only other eight is at the very last note when you get to the very end when we do that bar on five and pinky on eight. Okay, that's your, that's your final C chord. Um, but that's the only note in here that's going to be hard to hit. Let's give it a try. Um, I'm going to make myself a note. Measure 24 that this needs to be uh, the three before the eight needs to be third position, right? Meaning my index fingers on three. That's going to make it much more likely that my pinky will find an eight and then still have able to get back to three. Because if I do this, I'm going to miss one of those notes probably. All right, from the top, melody only. One, two, three. We're in three. <laughs> I'll count in two and we'll go. One, Two. didn't turn sorry there he goes uh, oh i forgot to mention when we go into page two you're entering into the first repeat right so it's one oh two oh oh three 
and then we're going to go back. So the the song really ends at the first note of measure 31. Then we have this little turnaround, 02003, and then that three is your pickup to go right back to the first measure. So don't linger around um, in measure 32. We've got to jump back up and get started on measure one again okay and so i blew that for you let's start from the top let's go through we'll go through and we'll do the repeat and see how we do okay and then just remember the second time you come through um don't play 31 and 32 jump to 33. from the top i don't know why my foot pedal is being a brat one two Start vibrato for a second. Okay. Whatever finger you finish that eight on, okay, I might happen to be a ring finger this time, but it doesn't matter. Don't lift it up. Don't do anything other than wiggle it. You get that little vibrato. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear mine, but I, I know for sure I can hear it here in the office. And practice it with each finger. So you can get that nice, whenever you have a nice long note that's kind of up by itself, especially a high note, give that a little vibrato. It'll make you sound very professional. Now, I don't like what I did on measure 31 and 32. It sounds fine on the tough you. Just get rid of the second note in measure 32. Just exit out. And then I think it's that solves the problem. So if we come in a that'll give you that, that'll give you a, the transition moment. Um, that'll give you that um, the G sound that we need to to make the chord make sense. Um, if you're strumming it, it'll sound fine. You could do nah, that sounds stupid. So I would X out the second note in major 32. Um, it just sounds odd. It doesn't sound like it belongs there. It's the correct note. Uh, it's okay, but it's not awesome. So uh, probably take that note out. All right. That's that's the melody. All right. This is a short a lesson because especially after like yesterday when we that's all we did was play C and G. Today we're playing C and this one. So it's, it's more of the same basically. But there's a couple of things that are unique in the tough uke, so let's talk about them. So first note is a three, right? And then you have five, 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 five. Remember, this is a C chord here. Five, 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 eight is a C chord. 
but the melody notes of five. So we just don't put our, our pinky on there and you get your C chord mm -hmm. with um, an A here, which is very fascinating that that's the, the, the uh, what's going on there. You got a C chord with an A on the top. Mm -hmm. Sounds wrong, but it sounds cool. Okay, so you're gonna go three bar, three. I'm gonna use a little bar here, cover the first two strings, one and one and one, and then your ring finger, uh, our middle finger up here on the top string. So it's an F chord, but you gotta cover both of those strings to get this next moment. One, one, zero, two. It's about the only hard moment in the song. Okay, okay play that. And then zero, and then a G7. 003, 003 again, 30, and another full G7. Grab your three with the ring, slide up. I, I'd probably just use your pinky to get the five. You could slide up and then come back to the three, and then the C chord. Those decorative notes that I add in there are not there by accident. When you see decorative notes, you want to play those a tiny bit louder and a tiny bit more aggressively than the rest of the song. Because if you have decorative notes in there and you don't commit to them, it sounds like you're making mistakes, right? If I come in, right, I get, uh, especially private students ends up with this a lot. Because they're just trying to get to the next melody note. Don't do that. Let those decorative notes be decorative. Let them jump out. Okay, so really play those in measure seven and into measure eight. Make those play them a little louder than the rest of the stuff. Okay, then we'll go back to measure eight and a half. And that three there is basically the same as the beginning. F chord with your three. One, O, oh, C, G7. I said F chord with your three. I mean C chord with your three, sorry. <laughs> G7 at measure 11. Play it again. Three, O. Oh. G7 at measure 13. With the three. Pinky for five. Back to your ring finger on with three. C chord at measure 15. More decorative notes. Take them seriously. Hit the three. With pink, uh, add your pinky and then put your C chord on. Go grab the one. Grab the zero C chord. Three, one, zero, zero, one. Three, oh. G7. Pinky on five. Good three. F chord or C chord. Decorative. You're going to want now. Here's where things get a messy. Okay. My suggestion is if you're playing the tough uke and you have this three, you got choices. You can play with your pinky and slide up to eight. You can play with your index finger, grab the eight. Either of those are possible. What's going to sound coolest is if you grab it with your pinky. Slide up and then add your bar on five. Okay, so the, so you would actually end up playing the tough uke a little differently than we play um, the melody. So melody, you're just trying not to make mistakes. You just want every note to be perfect and clean. But when you're playing tough uke, we're trying to get as much show business out of it as possible. And so I'm going to grab the three with my pinky, slide up to eight, add the bar at five, and then I'm going to slide all the way back with my pinky, three, and then I'm going to put this C chord on. Okay, so that's a big moment in the song, right? That eight is da 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 da, da. So we want to um, have that be a big deal. Come back to 26, uh, C chord with your three, go grab the one and zero, 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 one, zero, zero, three, Three again, three O, G seven at measure twenty nine, pinky on five. And move to the note last page. Bum bum. And I, I lose that zero again. That second uh, note in measure thirty two. Just get rid of it. it sounds stupid. And you get the two zeros. Then you get the, the 
then Matt three picks you up to play the song again. Let's talk about the measures 33 and 34 very quickly. You're going to come into measure 34, 33, play that F chord, C chord. Gosh, play the C chord. You can play a zero. Again, grab it with your pinky, slide up, put it on eight, bar on five. You have this fun little ending, little high, high C chord on there. It's going to sound awesome. We're going to play through it twice. You're going to hit every note perfectly. You're about to be uh, play Paganini. You're going to play it beautiful. It's going to be impressive. Um, all right. Here we go. From the top. One, two. Paganini. Legit classical music. Hopefully that's working well for you. Uh, Cindy mentions, perhaps ironically, that it's set at 160. So if you go listen to the MB3, it's going to go dun 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 carnival-like Italian fashion, okay? So don't worry so much about the speed. Yeah, this is supposed to be fast. Um, but as, but there's no rule. Paganini's not coming to your house to have a talk with you about what speed you play it at. Um, so f find the speed that you can do it at. And obviously push, right? Push. You want to get it as fast as you can. Uh, it'll sound better. Um, I don't even think I could play it at one sixty. Whoop.
<laughs> that's a hard really part. <laughs> No, 160 is probably a little bit. I think eventually I could, right? I think that eventually you can too. Um, but why? Okay, I don't know. You just so you feel some obligation to Gary's one quarter note equals 160. Play it at the speed that makes sense to you. Play it at the speed that makes it pretty for you. All right. I've had enough of baritone for today. You have lovely tunes. Let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow we have... Friday concert. You're going to come in. We're going to first, we're going to warm up with your make a better bar worksheet. So make sure that that you've had a chance to warm up on that. Tonight, I would go through and review the key of D arpeggio. Make sure that you can play that or play your version of that. And then we will play Simple Gifts and Carnival of Venice. So it should be a short concert tomorrow. Uh, but every single thing on there is where you're getting to the point where you have mastered the fundamental tool set in baritone ukulele and all of ukulele um, where you are where your right hand is doing a lot of smart things where your left hand is doing a lot of smart things and all that's coming together because next week is the end of the intro series next week we will be doing uh, uh, the two stretch pieces I'm trying to remember that what uh, uh, we'll be doing a Scarborough Fair and Aloha Oi those are Sort of the stretch pieces at the end of the run, at the end of the run, pretty hard pieces to see how you're coming out with all of this stuff. Uh, also, next week we have Daisy Bell, and then finally the key of C arpeggio, so you, uh, which is, involves a lot of bar chord work. So um, we're coming to the end of your intro time, and then we'll talk next week about you know does it make sense to play continue working on that stuff, or are you still struggling with some of it, or is it time for you to start getting higher level stuff? And um, that's my plan, at least at the moment, is to maybe switch it Monday, Monday, Tuesday would be the a little bit easier stuff. Wednesday, Thursday would be the hard harder stuff. Maybe I haven't quite figured out how to do the timing on all of this yet, but I am going to get you guys plenty of music to keep you busy. And um, like I say, I'm working on creating the same exact program that the ukulele players have, and it should be nice for you. I hope. I'm hoping. All right, that's enough for today. I'm going to yank the plug. I don't know if anybody's still there or not. <laughs> um, teach guitar after this, and um, hope you had a wonderful day as well. And um, so. Our four, our, our rules are do good, be safe, practice. Tomorrow's a hot concert. You want to play as well as you can when you come tomorrow. Um, show up. Okay. You will not become a great baritone. You will not become any kind of musician if you don't show up once in a while. A huge ass moth. It just flew through here. My God, that thing looks like a bird. Um, subscribe and like. Right? That's it. Have a wonderful day, you guys. I'll see you all tomorrow. And uh, we're going to keep going until all of us are famous. So there you go. Talk to you soon. Have a great night.